Hello everybody, now today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the Microsoft Xbox press conference that took place at E3 2019 this year. For those interested in that said conference, I will be linking it down below. Now please note that there was <laughs> quite a lot of bad that I saw this year. I'm going to start with the good first. Now one of the things that really popped out at me was Borderlands 3. I mean. I'm a big fan of the Borderlands games, I've made some Borderlands related videos, and 3 looks really awesome. And of course, when we talk about 3, we can't help but talk about the bad news that comes along with 3. For those of you who are interested in the PC version of this game, guess what? You can't get it on Steam. No, you have to get it from the Epic Game Store, because this is going to be an Epic Game Store exclusive for the first 6 months after release. So. You would have to wait six months to be able to actually get this on Steam. And another thing is, there's a lot of really bad things that um, <laughs> the Epic Game Store has been uh, doing, as well as what it lacks that Steam has. I mean, they don't really care about consumers. They're anti-consumer. In fact, I will be linking a few videos that actually point out how the Epic Game Store is bad. And uh, I will also be showcasing this pick right here, which showcases everything that is wrong with the Epic Game Store. With that being said, let's move on to the next game that I really like, Gears 5. <laughs> I can't wait till this comes out, it looks so awesome. And there's even going to be a DLC for it, which is based on the Terminator franchise. I think it's really awesome, and I can't wait to give this a shot. They didn't show too much of what's expected, but uh, I really want to play this. There's going to be Horde mode, I know that much, and it's going to focus on Kate. And that's really all I know about it. <laughs> and then, of course, you have this next good game, at least what I thought was cool, uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. This is really cool because um, I have the first game, Ori and the Blind Forest. Such a good game. And uh, the bad side is it's not coming out until February 11th, 2020. And then there's Dying Light 2, which looks really cool. Um, I would mostly be only playing that on PC. And... Fantasy Star 2! It looks awesome, and I want to play it. Even though I've never played any of the previous P Fantasy Star games, I have gotten into JRPGs and some MMO-related games, so this seems kind of cool. I think it's going to be an Xbox One exclusive, but time will tell when that will actually change from being an exclusive on Xbox to then being available on PC. Fantasy Star Online 2 should be available on Steam as well. Uh, the next game that's really cool, uh, well, it's not really a game, it's actually a subscription service, which is Xbox Game Pass for PC, in which it's $9.99 a month, and I think that it's actually a pretty good deal, but it should be cheaper. Most of what Xbox has to offer is already available on other platforms. It's bad for them, basically, because a lot of people are not really going to be getting the, those said games on their system unless they're exclusives, because that's what's going to really draw people in. Then there's Tales of Arise, which, um as part of the Tales series, like Tales of Symphonia, Basuria, and uh, Zestiria, and all those kinds of games, all those awesome looking JRPGs. Uh, this is one game I would only play on PC. Now, let's move on to the bad! Which, um, I'm gonna start with one of the main points here. They oversold the fuck out of Xbox as, hey, it's the next big thing, when it's totally not. It's going to be so good, it can deliver great graphics and stuff. Yeah, whatever, buddy. Um, here's the thing. A lot of people keep talking about how consoles can be as good as PCs. In a sense, they have some similar technology, but let's get one thing straight. Consoles are cheaper than gaming PCs. That cannot be debated. Which means that the hardware used in consoles is going to be one thing. Cheaper. And Xbox has AMD hardware not exactly bad, but at the same time, that's also what's in PCs as well. There are two big graphics card makers, AMD and NVIDIA. AMD does the same thing as the other one, but is much cheaper to afford. NVIDIA, however, is more expensive and gives you more bang for your buck in terms of graphical quality. And since Xbox has AMD hardware, that's the reason why it's cheaper to afford. Uh, then you have a Blair Witch. It doesn't really look like it's something I would be interested in. Uh, then there's this game called Bleeding Edge, made by Ninja Theory. You know, the guys that made that really awful non-canon DMC Devil May Cry game, along with uh, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. This game, Bleeding Edge, it looks like Overwatch with a Mad Max cone of paint. 
I, I don't really like how this looks whatsoever. You can't just make something look dystopian and expect me to like it. Moving on to the average games. How do I explain this in the best way? Um, there was quite a bit that was average here. Some that just looks like I might try out. First, there's the Outer Worlds, which looks to be some sort of Fallout-like game. It has some dystopian elements and FPS uh, elements as well. It looks like it might be cool. I'll have to, uh, of course, rent that first. Then you have Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, how do I put it in the best way? It has Keanu Reeves in it. <laughs> it's probably going to be an only online ordeal, but yes. Um, it looks promising even though we don't know much about it, but yeah, I would play it. Then there's Minecraft Dungeons, which is a four-player local slash online co-op game. To me, it looks kind of like one of those mobile games that you would play, but who knows, it might actually be fun. Then you have Way to the Woods, which looks, which looks so adorable. I think I would actually play this. This looks really cool. Then you have DLC for Forza Horizon 4. It's the uh, add-on, which is LEGO Speed Champions. I have some doubts about this, considering that Forza always has uh, really heavy controls when it comes to controlling cars. I mean, that's one of the bad things. The cars feel really heavy, and the steering is a little tough in that regard, but there are ways that you can change it some. Moving on to Halo Infinite. There wasn't really any gameplay shown, which is bad, but I would actually play this regardless. We don't know much about Halo Infinite or how it's going to be. But then there's this new Battletoads game that's going to be coming out on the Xbox. It's, I certainly would play it. The Battletoads have had new redesigns, and I don't really like that whatsoever. It really turned off a lot of people when they first saw it. I can agree with them. Moving on to this uh, bit of good news. Uh, Psychonauts 2 is going to be coming out, and its developer, who made the first game, Double Fine Productions, have joined Xbox Game Studios. But Psychonauts is something I do want to play eventually. It looks promising. I unfortunately don't have much to say about the first game. I haven't played it yet. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, my thoughts overall. What games are you guys excited for? Comment down below. Anywho, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next video.